Thank you, Kevin. Certainly. Appreciate it. How's that hair? Getting on it. Working on it. You working on it? All right, it's okay. Everything all right? So that's the camera. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm going to try to start this sucker up. Move this sucker like that. Oh, this guy's not staying there. Is he? Okay. Well, you Good. So how's doing? it going, Ed, Ed, other than that? Good. It's going well. When did you get back the on show's the show's off the air. I'm a little bummed about that. What is? The show, the Discovery Show. Oh. Yeah, tell me about that. That was a great experience. You, you know, you were with me when I was kind of... You know, people don't know that, that, that don't know you. Don't know the show, right? Yeah, well, you've oh. been coming here for years. First of all, let's talk about that. Oh, we uh, taping? Huh? We should be. All right, tell me when to start. Well, you want to go yeah, to the cobblestones cool. first? No, or no. You want to see town? Yeah. Oh, no, this is fine. We can talk right here. You, um, you came out here doing stand-up comedy, right? I came out here about, uh, I came out here about 15 years ago, actually, uh, to just vacation. But I first started performing out here about... God, I guess five or six years ago. Right. I came out uh, to be in the Actors Theater for a couple of Christopher Durang plays that they were doing. Then I was acting in Los Angeles, doing stand-up comedy mostly in Los Angeles. But I wanted to, and I'd been taking acting classes forever and never had been in a play, so to speak, not in a professional situation anyway. Right. And so uh, I came out here and started to do the play. And I talked to the artistic director, Richard Carey, and he said that uh, Monday nights were dark. And I said, you know what? I should do stand-up comedy on Monday nights. Well, have you you've been doing stand-up comedy? I had been doing it. I had been on television quite a bit doing it. But I, what I decided to do was put my stand-up away for the summer and, and just concentrate on my acting and do a play. Right. Um, you know, I had done some TV that, that week. Wow, she's cute. Hi, watch out for cars. They hurt you, even on an island. Um, what I, you know, uh, you know, I'd been on MTV, even at the Improv. Uh, why did you decide Comics you wanted to, to be a stand-up comic? I mean, how? Why does anybody want to do that? Well, I don't know. I always thought I could. I, I've always, well, I've always thought I've been funny. Uh, my family would right. tell that, you. Right. It always that I'm starts funny. somewhere, maybe in school or something, where you, right. you've been a jokester or. Yeah, I was definitely class clowner. Of course, Billy Crystal says class comedian. Class clown is. Uh, Usually the guy who runs out nude, yeah, right. you know, at the uh, Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah. The class comedian is usually the guy who talks him into it. But um, yeah, I always thought I could do it, and I was playing uh, soccer and started writing some stuff down uh, when I was on the road, yeah. traveling on the road. And when my soccer career was over, I decided to start to do some stand-up. And I went to Boston and uh, started doing some of the open mic nights there. And then for the next seven years, I. Uh, Basically, just did comedy three, four nights, three, four uh, times a night, six nights a week. Wow. And you did so the circuit, did, like well, a lot you know, of, yeah. Is that what it's called is it? What do they call that? A circuit? Yeah, they call it the circuit. Comedy or circuit. go ahead. Everybody gets to go in the crosswalks here. Yes. The people in the crosswalks have the power. Yes. You know, I don't mind them having the power so much, Gino. It's when they when they sort of meander across and they look at you like kind of, I've got the power. Exactly. I'm in the crosswalk. Yes. It's like I know you do, but move it. Did you see yourself? Yeah, good. See yourself. Everybody sees themselves. Well, this guy was a was one of the tour tour bus you know, operators. Yeah, not the tour bus, but the uh, shuttle bus drivers. And uh, next week, the shuttle bus drivers. Yeah, we did them last week. Oh, great. But um, so what brings you back now? Uh, More stand-up comedy? Well, I tell you, I uh, I missed it last summer. I was not here last summer for the first time in in six years. Right. And I really missed it. I uh, I was doing a show. The Discovery Channel last year in Toronto, Canada, so yep. I couldn't uh, I couldn't be here. Oh yeah, tell us about that. I remember that. Well, what do you want to know first, Gina? Well, do you want to know I about mean, the Discovery Show, or do you want to know why I'm back? I want to know why you're back, and then then you can tell me about the. Okay. Uh, sorry, man. It's sorry. Right. Kick his butt. Because wasn't I know that we started a motor vehicle at this point. I know that we started on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm back uh, because I'm not working this summer. I'm off till the fall, so I'm back and I'm doing the stand-up show again which is going to start Monday night. Yeah. Um, and uh, years past, I've done the show alone, but uh, this year I've tried to add somebody each week to perform with me. Oh, okay. Uh, comedian friends, whether it's uh, Paula, whether it's 
Jackie Flynn, who's going to be the first week. He uh, just started in the movie Kingpin. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and the next week will be Greg Fitzsimmons, who hosts his show, Idiot Savants, on MTV. Oh, that's a good So I've got show. some real ringers coming in, and uh, even Anthony Clark is going to come in. Anthony was the, yes. the star of Boston Common on NBC. Is that, no, is that not happening? Yeah, the show's been scrapped, but he's got oh. another development deal with ABC, So, and he's also in a film with Bruce Willis. So, cool. barring any problems on the film set, he'll be out here as well. So we have some, some good people. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to do something uh, called a conversation series, a conversation with. We're going to try to line up various people uh, from the film industry, television industry, sports world, uh, to come out and uh, just basically hang out and talk. Uh, we have the Farrelly brothers who wrote and directed Dumb and Dumber. They directed Jim Carrey in this uh, in the film, Jeez. huge film. When will they that happen? They're going to come out. It's going to start on Sundays in July. July 27th is the first Sunday, and it'll run through August. So. Wow, that's super. Yeah, so we'll be we're excited about that. So Sunday and Monday night, and we'll do as as always we're doing at the Actors Theater. Yep. Right. So, but uh, the Discovery series that we're yeah. doing uh, probably was the most exciting year of my life. A lot of reasons. One, it was. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw it. Probably not. That's why they took it off the air. But what it was was uh, teach your daughter how to ride a bike. Single file, sweetheart. Um, we did is 51-hour episodes, original episodes, uh, and they basically sent me all over the world to do just extreme adventures. Whether it was uh, bungee jumping, shark diving, uh, rock climbing. I went up in a jet fighter, uh, gliders, parasail, parachute. I basically spent the entire year just trying not to vomit, um, but it was it was a blast. It was a great time. Did and you actually go into a shark cage? Actually, I dove with sharks without a cage, which was why I was so uh, why I was so nerve wracking. Really, what it was is this uh, place called Walker's Key, off of uh, the Bahamas, small island in the Bahamas. Uh, what they would do is they'd go about two miles offshore. Yeah. And they'd start to circle the boats and rev the engines, and all these sharks would start to gather. Yeah. Like Pavlov's dogs. Right. They're trained. Did you do your, do your science homework when you were a kid? I you remember know? Pavlov's. All right. So um, sure. they all start to gather, and about over 140 of them gathered around the boat, and then they tell you to dive in. And they tell you to immediately get to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, and you basically yeah, you better go, make sure dive in. No. <laughs> well, what it is is that the sharks know they're going to be fed with this chumsicle, this frozen chum ball. Yeah. So you dive in basically with the sharks, and now once you're under the water with them, they basically think you're one of them. They think you're a predator like they are, so they kind of leave you alone. They're waiting for this chum ball, waiting for this chum ball. So what you do is you, you dive to the bottom, which is about 35 feet down, and you look up. And then the boat drops this big chumsicle, they call it, all these frozen frozen fish heads and entrails. Yep. It's the same single file family we went by before. Yes, these are that. You know, one of the things about Nantucket, it's a beautiful island, but uh, obey the rules of the road. All right. Thank you. You, you too, uh, Gino. Yeah. Uh, all right, so basically uh, they drop that chum ball, and all the sharks start to hit it. And you're basically just watching these sharks feed. Frenzy, yeah. I'm literally, you're literally 10 feet away from the uh, chum ball watching these sharks go crazy. Wow. And, uh, and they leave you alone. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. It, absolutely. Really? You're, it, yeah. did, it, did it like... It, I definitely have a new f perspective on sharks because... Uh, new perspective on sharks because hey, they're, they're not... Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. They're not cold-blooded killers. They're... They're just predators of the sea. They're right. doing their job. Yes. And they're not just killers. If you're down there with them and they think you're one of them, you're just kind of hanging out. That's it. So you uh, must Now, if I had gone up near that chum ball, I would have been in for a little fist fight exactly. with the shark, right. and I would have lost dramatically. But, uh, but yeah, they're, they're, and, you know, they're killing, like, thousands of these things a day, um, mostly the Japanese, uh, for shark fin soup yeah, exactly. and for the cartilage uh, pills that people are taking now. It's, it's terrible. They're going to actually... You know, wipe the, the shark off the uh, off the map for their uh, own frivolous little reasons. But right. uh, yeah, I definitely definitely a mis misunderstood creature. But I learned a lot about a lot of things because of the series. Yeah. It was great. And really and so what's what's in the future for you? What uh, outside of, of doing the what well, you got going on here? Well, a couple things. I had been uh, working um, with Judith Ivy, who's an, an actress. And she had uh, something going with. Uh, a writer to develop a sitcom. Um, so I was working on that. And also, uh, my one man, I, the one man I did, I'm going to try to perform it in New York this fall. 
Cool. So, cool. Which you've seen. Yes, I have. And it's very good. Are you going to do that again here? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I'll do it this summer. The one thing about a stand-up, and, you know, I originally started to write it when I was 30 years old, and it, you know, talks about my life and my family. It's just, I think it's kind of hard to write it at 30, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you recently but now married. at 35. And now you're married, too, so. Now I'm married, yeah. Which is, which is interesting. And the weird the thing about being married... I aren't going to be too happy about this, uh, but... I, uh, well, the weird thing about being married is, um, is that it cuts down on your dating. It does. It's really, I mean, just kind of, you know, once, twice a week, tops. No. It's been great. I, uh, I found someone who I share lots of things with, so, um, wow, is she hot? Just kidding. No, uh, <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Did you say, hey, I will go to children's speech. Sweetheart is not sexist. That's sort of just a loving term that I Yeah, use. but, you know, I say that stuff you know. is, that stuff is out, though. PC thing? Yeah. It's That's, all BS anyway. It is BS. It's crap. Remember when I was doing stand-up in Boston, the guy at the Catch a Rising Star was into PC. You had to completely pull anything that was on PC from your act. You know, you couldn't even say manhole cover, you know, personhole oh, covers. Like, really? Oh, yeah. what a dark... Those are the dark ages in comedy, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The dark ages. I think ages. it was a backlash because of Dice Clay and Sam Kinison, but I think Kinison, yeah, right. in hindsight, had something interesting to say. Dice Clay yeah. just sort of... Uh, just sort of... Can I shit on everybody? And then, no, I guess I can't. I'll, blo I'll take it I'll out. block it out. Yeah, Dice Clay just was mean, period. And didn't have anything redeeming to say about anything. So, do you, but do you, thank God that's all done. Are you living in L.A.? Thing. I have been living in L.A. I uh, moved my stuff out of L.A. in May because of... Uh, uh, Go ahead, ma'am. You want a bike? Back. That's it. Watch your back. Um... Yeah, I moved out of L.A. in May, and I'm, moved, I'm living in New York now, uh, now that I'm married. Yeah, so, right. uh, Okay, cool. Had a little homestead in New York City. Wow, that's so great. Which, uh, I'm looking forward to. Great comedy scene in New York, a lot more stage time. Right, yeah. These mirrors are great. You can check yourself out. How do you look? You're driving. Eh, getting old. Getting old, you I know. I know, man, so am I. We're okay. in the same boat. 